Go ahead. Love this artist. Her name is Sandy Schimmelgold, and they're called Sustainable Mosaics, and she's just an amazing talent. She takes... I, I can't even imagine the amount of time and patience that it takes, but all of her mosaics are made from paper scraps. Um, she cuts up junk mail and other things. She keeps it by color, and then she makes these amazing portraits or landscapes all out of junk mail. And we're, we're so thrilled to have her. That one, too. Uh, that one, too. That one's called Thinly Veiled, and it's thinly veiled as you can see um, but she really she's a local artist and she but she has had a one-woman show at a museum in Las Vegas she's been listed on a list of the top 10 amazing recycled art displays in the world you know along with things in Venice Italy and elsewhere and then and then here's Sandy Schimmel Gold. I mean, she's really, she was featured in Phoenix um, Home and Garden as an emerging artist, and her work is really amazing. And now she's working on uh, a series of pieces that um, she will do to music and create the works of art based to reflect the emotions invoked by the music which is very near and dear to, to my heart because I'm a, I'm a big music nut. And so I can't wait to see what she comes up with, but it's really very cool. She's, she's tucked here in here in this um, section that has all local and all natural um, skincare and cosmetics products. Um, this was a real education for us, uh, because we 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 didn't start this as experts on sustainability or being green. We really didn't even start it as people with a very good history of doing anything about that. And um, the store was originally going to be named Pass It On Resale and Consignment, and it was going to be a way to raise money to support our little pea-sized nonprofit that we were starting. And uh, the purpose of our nonprofit is to work with people who are trying to get out of uh, homelessness or poverty, but with long-term solutions. Um, there's plenty of programs that serve immediate needs. There's programs that work with them for three months, for six months, whatever, but not a lot available for the kinds of things that they have to invest in for long-term sustainability, education, entrepreneurship. So that's what we wanted to kind of add to the picture. So we took a long time to open the store. We leased the space um, almost a year before we opened the store. And a big part of our program is about, um, the, is about service to others that one of the best ways to help yourself is through service to others. And we had all kinds of volunteers who helped with the effort. And the pictures that we were originally going to have it featured over there as a wall of fame, except that we didn't have enough space. So we had to create this little gallery um, with photos. The archway, yeah. Yes, and we don't have all the photos up there, but all of these people volunteered, worked on the building. When we took this building, it had navy blue carpet tiles over vinyl in some cases, over plywood subflooring that was glued down and screwed down, and got down to the original hardwood floors. Um, it had a drop acoustic tile ceiling in most of the building. Here, there was no ceiling at all. And so the people who volunteered put in all of this woodwork that you see. That ceiling there, they put that in. They put in these columns, the soffits, all of the casements, and even made custom picture moldings so that we could hang pictures without banging into the wall. But when we started the renovation process, we thought um, there's, there's a lot of talent. The reason we're doing this is because they're a little more distance. But there's so much talent that's wasting away um, in our own backyard that really has, has you know, given opportunity 
can really become a real benefit to the community. And there's a lot of tradespeople. Um, there's a lot of very talented artists. And so this was, those were the main skills that we were set to work with. Well, the tradespeople, we figured, you know, the whole economy has to go green. I mean, we just don't have any choice. Um, we don't know if it's going to be now or next week or, you know, 10 years from now, but we're going to have to move that direction. So in the renovations, we tried to be as eco-friendly as possible, except we didn't really know what that meant. So we had to do research. Um, and we knew that it meant, you know, salvaging things instead of the construction industry, by and large, is accustomed to, because it's much simpler, just knocking things down and then replacing it with something that's new. And so uh, salvaging things in the process mm -hmm. is something that doesn't come easy. As far as the eco-friendly materials and so on, we didn't have a clue, so we had to do research. And when we did that, we discovered that there's this whole parallel universe out there that we were not in touch with. There are all kinds of eco-friendly products and services that we never knew existed. You know, when you think of green or sustainability, most people think of solar panels or CFL bulbs. And, you know, those are things that, you know, one of the hundreds or thousands of, of things. But we also realized that, you know, we, we knew we couldn't afford solar panels and we realized there are so many things that we came across that are things everyone can do. They don't cost you anything. In fact, they save you money. And so the shop that started out as a resale consignment shop then became Ecocentricity. And we got a huge education. And what this place is really about is the easy things that everyone can do. And it's about reuse because of the three R's that gets that gets so overlooked. Um, if we just reuse the things, you know, my house has stuff that I'm not using that's cluttering up my house. I bet your house has stuff that's cluttering up your house that my you're car. that you're not using your car at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at the same time that w that we're holding this stuff prisoner, there's people out there who are looking for that exact same stuff. And the other end of reuse is what you see right here, the uh, kick the disposable habit. We've, we've had an ongoing campaign since we opened the store. Um, we started with plastic water bottles, and now we're featuring plastic bags. Um, it, these are things that are easy for everyone. If we try and cut down on the plastic water bottles that we're using and use a reusable water bottle instead, um, that can make a huge difference. The plastic bags, we've been keeping a running, a running total. We started, since we moved on to plastic bags, you know, on March 9th, the world had used 92 billion plastic bags this year. And it, it's only, as of May 16th, we, were, we had already doubled that. We're up at 185 billion. This is, this is the easy part. Anyone can do this. You know, you bring a reusable shopping tote when you go to the grocery store. I have a hard time remembering, and a lot of people do. So we have little reminder bags that are, um, we had an intern from the ASU School of Sustainability, and she and my boyfriend's daughter had a great time making these little reminder bags. You put this on your doorknob, or hang it from your rear view mirror, or put it on your keychain, whatever's gonna remind you, you know, don't forget me, take the reusable bags. Um, but those small things like that, that all of us can do, and so we wanted this place with the people that are, um, that we're trying to uh, create a program to help, have them be leading the way in helping the community learn about how to be more friendly to the earth in all kinds of ways that are pretty painless.